Before the FIRE concept became a movement, Trinity University in 1998 did an extensive study on the investment withdrawal strategy, also known as the Trinity study. It is also known as the source of the 4% withdrawal rule. But you have to remember that these studies are done based on historical performances. No one knows how the stock market will perform tomorrow, next week, next month, or next year. But we do use the historical data to make sure the portfolio lasts until the end of our time. And this was the last or the original Trinity study from 1998, accomplished by Philip Cooley, Carl Hubbard, and Daniel Waltz. This document is also available on my website, so you can read it at any time. You're probably wondering why you should even care about what happened between 1926 and 1997. Well, you have to understand that the market doesn't always go up, and sometimes the market can stay down for many years. The bear market years I saw was the dot-com bubble and the global recession in 2008. As you can see, they had a 100% success rate in my, making the uh, portfolio last with a 3% withdrawal rate with 100% allocation in stocks. And keep in mind that this is after going through a Great Depression in the 1930s, World War II, and high inflation in the 1970s and early 1980s. The high financial market returns in the 1980s and 1990s allow the portfolio to achieve at least a 75% success rate. A withdrawal rate of 8% was actually successful if the investor maintains a portfolio of at least 50% stocks. This data is also based on the monthly withdrawals. And if you go to the PDF of the study, I'll sh it'll show you a table with the success rate with inflation adjusted withdrawal rate, okay? And you also have to keep in mind that some of the allocation strategy was to use the 60-30-10, which was 60% stocks, 30% bonds, and 10% treasury bills from 1926 to 1997. They also have another table showing success rate from 1946 to 1997, which excludes the Great Depression and World War II. And there are several published and updated Trinity studies from several wealth management companies. And RBC Wealth Management published a guideline to help people understand the recent success rate. And I'm actually doing one of my own every year. And it's important to stress test your portfolio at least once a year to create a mock retirement budget. Remember, you have to recalculate your fire number at least once a year to make sure that you're on track. But anyway, you still have to remember that these are success rates based on historical returns. They use the S&P 500 index and government bonds for the allocation. This is different from the original Trinity study, and it shows the 40-year retirement horizon. And remember, we are living a lot longer than our previous generations. When I look at my financial planning, I want my portfolios to last 40 to 50 years. But again, none of the data I just showed you can guarantee future success. Before you figure out how much you should withdraw from your investment portfolio, you need to first calculate how much pension income you're going to collect. That's the taxable income. So you want to prioritize how much you'll get that first. Do you plan to get qualified dividend income or capital gains? Because these are taxed at 0, 15, or 20% in a different tax bracket if you meet the long-term thresholds. And are you going to have real estate or some type of disability income? If you've ever served in the military, you might be collecting some type of tax-free VA disability income. So if you have $30,000 a year in pension income, and another $30,000 a year in real estate income. And you just need $40,000 a year from your $2 million investment portfolio, and that's going to be a 2% withdrawal rate, right? And I strongly recommend that you don't just rely on one investment vehicle. And this is why I have multiple investment vehicles with different characteristics. Some of them are in after-tax contributions, and some of them are in Roth. You also have to pay attention to how the market performs every year because you're assuming that you're not making any additional contributions during your retirement. So if you go through a tough time in the market, do you have enough cash set aside to weather the storm? I will go over how to overcome a bear market in a separate video. So how often should you withdraw from your taxable investment portfolio? We talk about the 4% withdrawal rule a lot, but what is the frequency you should really do it? Even if you're not anywhere close to your retirement age, this lesson can help you understand how you can live on your investment portfolio without working on a nine to five job. Now remember, taxes from these portfolio distributions will matter a lot in your financial planning process. So let's talk about the market-based approach on your investment distributions. Determining a safe withdrawal rate in retirement is extremely difficult since you have no idea 
how long you'll live and how well or how bad the market will perform in the following year. So let's say I retired in December 2014 with 100% stock allocation in my $1 million portfolio, knowing that the market returned 11% by the end of 2014, I could make a one-time 4% withdrawal of $40,000 in January 2015. If $40,000 came out of my taxable brokerage account, then it would be tax-free with a 0% capital gains tax rate. If I withdrew it from my 401k, then it would be in the 12% marginal tax rate. If it came from my Roth IRA, then it would be completely tax-free. You have to be very aware of your tax implications for making distributions from every investment vehicle. And by the end of 2015, the market finished with a negative 1%. And I may not feel as safe with the market uncertainty. So I decided to take a 2% withdrawal rate instead of 4%. The rest of the 2% came from other sources of income or cash. And by the end of 2016, the S&P 500 finished with a 10% return. What I could do is sell 5% and use 1% of that to replenish the cash that I used to pay for my retirement expenses in the previous year. It's easy to look back at the stock market from years ago, but you have to realize how difficult it is to look forward when you have no idea how the market will perform in the following year. And in 2017, the S&P 500 finished with a 20% return. I could withdraw 5, 6, or 7% or even higher because the spread is wider in 2017, right? That extra 15% in the spread can make your investment portfolio last even longer if there's no market crash or a recession in the near future. You also have to adjust your distributions based on inflation, so you'll need to keep that in mind. You can also do what's called a fixed monthly withdrawal from your investment portfolio. It is exactly what it sounds like. So if you have a million dollars in your traditional 401k, your 3% withdrawal rate will be $2,500 a month before taxes, $3,333 a month with the 4% withdrawal rate, and $4,167 a month with a 5% withdrawal rate. And again, keep in mind that these are all pre-tax income if they come from your traditional 401k. Your broker should also ask you how much taxes to withhold on the side. So when they send you an IRS form 1099-R in February of the following year, then you shouldn't have to pay any taxes for the 401k withdrawals unless you have some additional income. If you're getting Social Security or other pension income, then you need to make sure that to set aside additional taxes by calculating your total effective tax rate. You don't want to be penalized by the IRS for under withholding your federal income tax. And if you need to make additional tax payments, be sure to check out when the quarterly tax payments are due. If you have additional income sources like the capital gains from the taxable brokerage account, then you need to make these tax payments before the due date. If you're living on Roth, then you don't need to worry about any tax payments at all because that's all tax-free income from your Roth IRA or Roth 401k. And the other method is to split withdrawals to keep your taxes low. This is probably more applicable if you plan to take distributions from your traditional 401k, 403b, or TSP. So theoretically speaking, let's say you want to withdraw $120,000 from your traditional 401k. Instead of taking a lump sum distribution, you could split it in two payments in year one and then take another $60,000 in year two because doing that would keep you in the 12% marginal tax rate, assuming that you're single when you're retired. If you're married and filing your taxes jointly, then your marginal tax rate is 12% as long as you're under $120,000 in total distributions in one year. So you have a bigger tax advantage if you're married. If you're single, then maybe doing the split payments is the right approach for you. So if I had to pick a priority order in which bucket I want to withdraw first, I would pick my traditional or pre-tax account first because I want to avoid RMDs or require minimum distributions as much as possible when I'm in my 70s. The next bucket will be my taxable account because it's taxed at 0, 15, or 20% in long-term capital gains tax rates. The last bucket I'll touch is my Roth accounts, because I want my tax-free money to grow as much as possible and as long as possible. So what should you do if you're retired and you experience a severe recession, like we did in 2000, 2008, and 2022? Well, 2022 was not a severe recession, but it was a recession nonetheless. And I want to go over the three withdrawal strategies during your retirement, as well as the pros and cons. So if you plan to retire earlier than age 55, then I recommend that you have at least two years of expenses set aside in cash or cash equivalent assets. This is the cash you should not have invested 
in the market because it's your insurance plan when you go through a bear market scenario. Why age 55? That's because if you plan to retire at age 55, you will also have access to your 401k. If you retire before 55, then you have to wait until 59 and a half to access to your 401k. And I talk about that in the video about the rule of 55. Then you might not need to have all two years, but maybe 1.5 years if you retire after age 55. But anyway, if your fire number, let's say is 2.5 million, then adding two years of emergency expenses will be $200,000 in a bear market fund. And that's gonna be a total of 2.7 million. And if you calculate 200,000 divided by 2.7 million, that's gonna be only 7.4% of your portfolio sitting in cash or cash equivalent assets. If you're worried about your cash allocation being too low, then consider going to 10% or 270,000. It's completely up to your risk tolerance. And what if your fire number was $5 million or more, or maybe $10 million? 10% of 5 million will be $500,000 in cash. This is where you're gonna have to debate with yourself if 10% is too much or if $500,000 is good enough. Any way you look at it, that's a lot of cash, right? But you have to remember that the portfolio size is much bigger. And regardless of the fire number, you have to pay attention to your annual expenses. Your expenses will increase every year with inflation, but not every expense item will increase at the same rate. And let's just focus on one portfolio at this moment. You can do what's called a systematic withdrawal strategy, where you only withdraw the income like dividends or interest from your portfolio. Your per principal will always remain intact. So you're preventing your investment investments from ever running out of money. The second withdrawal strategy is the fixed dollar withdrawal strategy. So this is more of a predictive amount where you withdraw the same amount of money out of your investment account every year for a set time. Then you just reassess every year based on your budget. And this method is much easier to manage and you don't need to consistently adjust your withdrawal amounts. But the downside of doing this fixed dollar strategy is that you're exposed to the risk of inflation, right? And the third strategy is a fixed percentage withdrawal strategy. You just withdraw a fixed percentage of your investment portfolio every year, regardless of how the market performs. It's easy to understand and implement because you're sticking to the withdrawal strategy. However, it can be very difficult to make financial plans because your income fluctuates every year. And there's also a risk of you outliving your investment portfolio. And the fourth strategy is the bucket withdrawal strategy. And you have a bucket that pays for your living expenses. The second bucket pays you in capital gains and the third bucket in tax-free income. And there are other bucket strategies like using cash, fixed income securities and equities, but I'm gonna stick to the investment vehicles instead. So let me show you how it generally works. Let's say you are single and you wanna take out $120,000 a year in retirement. If you took out all 120,000 from your traditional 401k, then your marginal tax rate is at 24%. So in order to save some taxes, perhaps you can take $50,000 out of your traditional 401k and $50,000 from your taxable brokerage account and $20,000 from Roth IRA, because that $50,000 from your traditional 401k will be taxed at 12% marginal tax rate is a single individual. And that $50,000 from your taxable brokerage account will be taxed at 15% long-term capital gains tax rate. And the remaining $20,000 from your Roth IRA will be completely tax-free. The downside of doing this strategy is that it can be very time consuming, but it may be worth it if you're trying to reduce your tax liabilities throughout your retirement. And for the systematic withdrawal strategy, you're only living on the interest earnings and dividends you earn from your portfolio. You're gonna keep your principal intact to prevent your portfolio from going to zero, right? So if your investment is in some type of fixed income portfolio that pays you three to 4% in dividend income every year, that $1 million would pay you 30,000 to 40,000 a year. And I'll just say 4% in this scenario here, this approach is pretty simple to understand because you're just living on your dividend income or interest that you earn. So your investment is most likely going to have a high yield, but lower growth. But this approach may not give you the same income every year, depending on the market performance. If the market does poorly, then your income may be reduced to whatever the market does that year, right? And having that fixed income is going to get outpaced by inflation eventually. And your portfolio is not likely not going to grow as much if you have a fixed income investment. So keep that in mind. 
So let's do some demonstration with the remaining two withdrawal strategies. So let's say I retired at the end of 2014, and all of these numbers are based on the real S&P 500 historical returns. And I'm going to use the 4% withdrawal rate or the fixed percentage withdrawal strategy. So that 4% will come out of the beginning or the beginning balance of this portfolio every year. The first year will just be the $40,000, right? But because 2015 was a negative year at negative 1.07%, my retirement income will be reduced to about $38,000 in the following year because the portfolio shrunk to $949,000, right? And when the market recovered the following year with a 10.37% return in 2016, then my income went back up to $40,000 because the portfolio recovered from the loss and some more. If your expenses went up, you might lose out on some inflation because your income stayed at $40,000 or less for three years during your retirement. And when the market did really well with a 20% return in 2017, my income in 2018 also went up to $46,000. And again, when the market went down by 6%, my income went down back down to 41%. Do you see the trend? You're depending entirely on the market performances. And this is assuming that you have 100% allocated to stocks and no bonds. But we have some bull market years from 2019 to 2021. Your income will also go up. You see how there's the big jump from 41,000 to 51,000, right? And when a bear market happened in 2022 with an 18% negative return, your income decreased from 69,000 to 54,000. So it's important that you manage your expenses every year. They will go up with inflation every year. But your investment portfolio using a fixed percentage withdrawal strategy will make your income fluctuate. As your portfolio grows, your income should grow too, but it will depend on how the market performs every year. And what if you did the fixed dollar withdrawal strategy? Your first year is still going to be $40,000 from the $1 million portfolio. Without any uh, inflation adjustment, your portfolio would still increase from 2014 to 2024 from 1 million to 1.7 million. But that's not necessarily ideal because your expenses have likely gone up from 2014 to 2024, right? The inflation rate is right here, all of these blocks. That's the end of year average. So I just put the inflation rate in the following year. These percentages are the annual average percentage from the CPIU. So you can go to the inflation calculator website to check it out yourself. Inflation has been at an average of 2% annually. It wasn't until 2021 and 2022 when we saw a 4.7% increase on average and 8% increase on average in 2022. The income in 2022 and 2023 would have been nerve wracking because not only the inflation rate was so much higher than the average, but the S&P 500 also finished the year with a negative 18% return. And in this case, losing about $300,000 in portfolio value, that would have made me or anyone nervous, right? So your portfolio does a little better with the fixed dollar withdrawal strategy, but your income is much less during those high inflation years. The fixed percentage withdrawal strategy would have given you about $55,000 in income because it just follows the market performance. And most of you watching this are still in the accumulation phase or actively investing in your portfolios. But it's important that you understand why you're investing in multiple portfolios. You shouldn't just do the 401k, but open up a Roth IRA, HSA, and taxable brokerage account. What I just showed you did not include any tax calculations. With a taxable brokerage account, you need to know what your long-term capital gains tax rates will be. If you're looking to retire at the age of 55, then your traditional 401k will be taxed as federal income tax. When it comes to any investment withdrawals, you need to keep both inflation and taxes in mind. Taking out $100,000 from a 401k may not be as tax efficient as taking out $100,000 from a taxable brokerage account, right? You can download some of the spreadsheets I just showed you throughout this video for free by visiting firesuchet.com slash resources. But most of them are only for the private course members. You can also schedule a session with me to talk about your financial independence strategy by visiting firesuchet.com slash consultation. And this has been another beast of a video, and I hope you got a lot out of it. Thank you.